Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to Talk Like a Leader. This week's episode is titled Assume at least benign intent. This episode comes as a result of a question I got while I was leading a training class earlier today. And as we were talking about change, change management, change communication, those types of topics, I was making the point that in change, in communicating about change, and in perceiving or interpreting other people's feelings or response to change, Leaders need to be really careful about the assumptions they make reading into the energy people use in communication back to the leader. Because as people confront change, they might feel frustrated, they might feel stressed, and that frustration and stress can come back to the leader in a way that sounds negative, aggressive, or highly resistant. When in fact, it's really just frustration and stress. It's not directly resisting the change. It's more of a frustration with trying to understand the change. And so as we talked about that concept, we were talking about how leaders can respond better to that apparent resistance that is really lack of understanding in a way that, well, doesn't contribute to the conversation going badly that doesn't feed into the initial energy of the conversation to make it worse than it is in the moment. And a question came, how do I listen for content rather than delivery? And I thought that was a fantastic question. The partial answer is assume at least benign intent. Now let me elaborate a bit on that point. When people express concern or frustration or stress by their tone, body language, possibly even word choice, It's easy to assume that they're angry, they're resistant, they're pushing back. And in fact, those things might be true. What I've noticed, though, is that, at least for me, if I assume the other person has negative intent towards me, if they're being resistant to me, if they're irritated with me, it tends to trigger my fight or flight response. It tends to cause me to feel a little bit angry and resistant and maybe even a bit pushy. And that response that comes from within me does absolutely nothing to advance the conversation. In fact, I've noticed that actually usually makes it worse. It contributes negative energy to the conversation that may or may not have been there to start with. It might only have been my assumption. So, Many years ago, I started saying the phrase, assume benign intent, meaning that if I can't tell for sure what a person's intention is, which is most of the time, I will assume benign intent. Well, over the years, I've added this phrase, at least in my thinking. I don't know that I've said it verbally very often. Assume at least benign intent, meaning that in a perfect world, I would get all the way to assuming positive intent, that The person meant positive towards me, even if they were frustrated with the moment. And sometimes the situation, the emotionality, the the history and the relationship, and many other factors can make it hard for me to get all the way to positive intent. I can at least get to benign intent, meaning I assume that even if they didn't mean well toward me or good toward me, they at least didn't mean ill or bad towards me. So I can assume at least benign intent. And if I can get past the assumption that they're meaning something negative towards me, they're angry with me, they want to fight with me, they want to resist me, if I can fight off those tendencies in my interpretations, those negative intention interpretations, then I retain more control of myself. I remain more present in the situation. I remain more capable of engaging with the person to listen to the content of what the person is saying and look past the delivery. So the idea of assuming benign intent has very little to do with what the other person says or does. It has more to do with controlling my response and keeping my focus on the things that I can control. 
which namely is my words, my actions, my tone. Now, this idea doesn't always serve me perfectly. Sometimes I assume wrong. Sometimes people do mean me ill, although pretty rarely, in all honesty. It's usually a miscommunication, a misinterpretation, rather than intentional harm directed towards me. And so by assuming benign intent, I can protect myself from negative interpretations that cause me to contribute to negative outcomes. It allows me to keep my focus on myself and my response while I listen to the other person and try to understand what's really behind their concern. It allows me to listen to the content of what they're saying rather than to focus on the delivery of it. One criticism I've gotten from talking about this idea, teaching this idea in workshops, is that I might miss when somebody actually means me harm, and I might not respond appropriately to a threat. And frankly, that's a valid point. If I assume a person has benign intent, and they actually meant me harm, I will have misread the situation. Now, my answer to that is, I'm not really concerned about that. I'm actually talking about situations where I'm not really at risk of being harmed in any way. The harm I perceive in terms of social threats, threats to my ego, threats to my status, threats to my feeling of being respected, and other such social slash relational threats, is the only real thing at risk. And so a slight misread in the beginning of a conversation really does me no harm. And it buys me lots of opportunity to inject some positive into the conversation. So if a person does mean me harm and I assume benign intent, I will respond in a way that hopefully turns the tide and creates an opportunity for a better conversation rather than responding negatively and making the situation worse. And ultimately, I realize that any assumption I make about another person's intention is an assumption. If I assume negative intent, that is an assumption. If I assume benign intent, that is an assumption. If I assume positive intent, that is an assumption. In many cases, I can get myself to assume positive intent. Some relationships, some situations, some circumstances, some context make it difficult for me to get all the way to positive. So I'll say assume at least benign intent. And that will position me to respond in a way to help the conversation go better, no matter what the person actually intended. The challenge with assuming negative intent, even if it's correct, is that my response feeds that negative energy. And then what about the case where they actually didn't mean me harm, which frankly is most of the time in my experience? If I assume a negative intent, I will respond negatively and I will take the rather benign comment the other person made out of frustration or stress or miscommunication and I will turn it into a negative response. So I've come to the conclusion that at least benign intent is a really good place to start. I'd like to get to positive intent many times I can get there. I'd encourage you to pursue the same effort. Assume at least benign intent. If you can, get yourself all the way to positive intent. If you can assume at least benign intent, I believe you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.